I know that we've all seen <clears throat> moments in nature when there is just something spectacular. When the sky is so blue, or there's just something about the wind, or there's a beautiful rainbow or a sunset, and it just catches your breath, doesn't it? And you feel that something beyond the norm is happening. It's like as we see nature open up in a way that is stellar beauty, we feel God touching us, don't we? And it's like in that moment, we know something fabulous is happening. Some greater love is penetrating the earth. Something wonderful is happening in that moment. And there's a, this expectancy and this connection with the divine. Don't you think that happened that day that Christ was born? Don't you think there was something in the sky, even before the star that night, something that made mankind stop and take a breath and know that God and man were connecting that day? I think it happens more frequently than we know. Those are moments when the hope of mankind and the expectations of the universe become one. Because the universe knows our destiny. It knows what we're to be and become. <coughs> and we, we can hope and touch. We can allow that greater idea to move into us. So, I wanted to talk a little bit with you this morning about that moment when Jesus was born and about the story that we've received of the events that occurred and the gifts that were given. We all know the story. The story is that uh, Joseph and Mary are in an isolated place. They have no place to go, so they go to a cave, a stable. We're not really sure what it is, but it's not your luxury hotel room of the day. It's very humble, and that's where uh, Jesus is born. And as the story goes, there were some shepherds that were out in the field that night who did not know Joseph and Mary from Adam. They had no idea who these people were. But this is what it says in the Aquarian. This is Aquarian 3.9. On the hills of Bethlehem were many flocks of sheep with shepherds guarding them. And the shepherds were devout. They were men of prayer. And they were waiting for a strong deliverer to come. So they had this hope within them. And when the child of promise came, a man in snow-white robe appeared to them, and they fell back in fear. And the man stood forth and said, Fear not. Behold, I bring you joyful news. At midnight in a cave in Bethlehem was born the prophet and the king that you have long been waiting for. And then the shepherds all were glad, and they felt that the hills were filled with messengers of light who said, A glory be to God on high, peace, peace on earth, goodwill to men. And then the shepherds with haste went to Bethlehem, so they could see this one who had been told, and they called him Emmanuel. What we have is a gift of people already on the earth, already with hope in their heart, being touched by the Spirit of God. And they then go and honor this baby with no expectations. And what kind of a gift is that? to honor that what they have been told about this child is true, and to see this baby with no expectations of what this baby will do. But they know it's a gift from God. And then the story tells us that Jesus was visited by the three wise men. And we know the story, how they came following the star, and visited Herod, and they knew Herod wanted to kill the child, and then when they found Joseph and Mary, they shared their story, and they brought their gifts. They followed their intuition. They followed their intuition to find the child. And they used their energy of intuition to protect the child. They brought the gift of knowing and acknowledging the truth. The gift of the acknowledgement of what the child was and his potential. People already existing on the earth plane. And then they brought three gifts. They brought myrrh, frankincense, and gold. 
And when we think of it, we go, yeah, myrrh and frankincense, that's just incense. That's, that's okay, that's good. I like incense. But gold, now there we go, gold. But the reality is, in that day and time, myrrh and frankincense was more valuable than gold. When you look at the properties of these two essences, their resins from plants, the medicinal properties are amazing. Frankincense, at the time, was used as an antidepressant. It was a, now they know, an antimicrobial. Frankincense kills cancer cells without killing the healthy cells around it. It is an anti-inflammatory. Myrrh works on the skin. Myrrh is a purifier. In the old days, they knew by combining myrrh and frankincense, you could heal so many things. Myrrh is used today for mouth sores and for gum health. <coughs> These two energies, you can look at the list of the miraculous capacity of healing that they have. So the wise men not only brought their acknowledgement, they brought <coughs> substance that would heal the emotional body, and they would heal the physical body. And they brought this beautiful energy of acknowledgement. <coughs> so, when this Christ was born, we not only had the beautiful celestial star from God, but we had all of these beings on the planet bringing things that would help the child. The gold is the coin of the realm. Do we have a coin of our realm? We have money. Money is the coin of our realm. It's what we use to exchange. Gold was the coin of their realm. This Christ child was not born into the world, and then the world said to it, do miracles. We need a miracle. I want you to heal me. Do you hear? We did not, they, they, these beings did not go to the Christ and say, I've been waiting for you. Save me from my troubles. They said, instead, we have been waiting for you. This will help you navigate our earth plane. We're going to give you some healing energy until you grow. We're going to help you emotionally. We're going to give you the coin of the realm so you can make your way through matter. We're going to acknowledge and honor you without expectation. And we're going to also use our intuition to guide us. <coughs> Do you see? When we look at the birth of the Christ, the Jesus, the Christ, we look at his birth as an example of how we might live. And when we feel our own inner Christ, or when we begin to feel we are a child of God, and we feel that spark opening in our heart, what's the first thing we ask of ourselves? Do a miracle. If you're not doing a miracle, you're not there yet. If you can't put your hand on your face and heal yourself, you're not there yet. You do this. Do you know it? Do any of us, when we open to the Christ, expect someone to bring us the coin of the realm? I see you're working on your Christ. Let me get you some coin to help you. Let me give you some myrrh to help you. And some frankincense to keep you happy and joyful. Let me give you acknowledgement without expectation and honor. You are the Christ. I have no expectations of you. I'm going to honor you. But let me also see you. Let me encourage you to use your intuition so you stay safe. Do we expect the world to give us that? No. But should we? That baby, Jesus, had to grow. <coughs> he had to become awake. He was an infant. He had to grow into his adulthood. And you know what he did, gift-wise, as he grew? One of the first gifts that he did when he was a little child, I think it was his seventh birthday, and his grandfather said to him, I will give you anything you want. And he said, I want a party, and I want to feed all the children of the village. And his grandfather said, so we shall. Jesus ran through the village, knocking on every door, this is scriptural, knocking on every door, saying, Come to my party, you are going to have food and, and celebrate. And all the ragtag kids, all the poor little children who had, probably had no food, 
all of them, no matter what their economic status, the children of the village gathered and they celebrated his birthday and they were all well fed and he and his mother served them. Now what was he giving them? He was giving them physical, wasn't he? He was giving them energy of physical support. He didn't say, yes, I think I am God's child and I know God's loving. Let me gather the children, grandfather, and I want to teach them about God. When Jesus got a little bit older and they were sacrificing the animals, what did he do? He gave the same gift that the wise men gave to him. He went to the <coughs> priest and he said, I know intuitively what you are doing is wrong. Intuitively I know this. He honored his intuition and he used it to protect the animals. When he was 12 and talked with the elders, he honored each one of the elders with no expectation that they should change. He simply spoke his truth. How often do we take our Christed awareness and we put it on this realm that says in order to Christ we must be above this earth plane. We must be doing things that are supernatural. Instead of letting our earth plane support the growth and the manifestation of this Christ within. Can you feel it? When the space opens up in you, it is so tender and so pure and so connected with your purpose, with the divinity. It is your eternal spark of God in your heart. And the world will come to your support if you open and ask for that. We treat our awakening as if when we awaken, we need to be fully grown. But our awakening is that of the baby child. And if we treat our awakening within as if the universe is sending a star to celebrate it, the people who do not know us from Adam are coming to say, yes, you have a gift that's coming that you're bringing to the earth from spirit, and we want to help you with that. Now, the wise men didn't stay connected with Jesus forever. He lived his life. They didn't keep funding him. He lived his life. The shepherds, he may have never seen most of them again, but they, did their, they offered their gift. When we walk freely on the earth plane, receiving the gifts that the universe brings to us from all of the people around us, we are then free to give those gifts and greater in return. And the healing. You know, Jesus really didn't begin his healing ministry until he was in his early 20s. And then the myrrh, the frankincense, all the qualities of the resins were no longer needed. But how much had they been used in the process to grow to the point where he could do the healing? Every one of you has that beautiful gift of the Christ within. Every one of you is birthing that divinity. And we may be in various stages of awareness, but we're all children of God. And the more tender we are with ourselves to allow that aspect to mature and to allow that aspect to be supported, the more that aspect is free to express on the earth plane. Sound good? Take a breath. We're going to go with it.